Hi, this is Derek with It Does It. Today I want to show you some of the features of our Microsoft Dynamics CRM Entity List Connector. This connector is used when you want to read data out of any of your entities in your Microsoft Dynamics instance. So let's get started. So I've logged in and gone into the Does It library. You can see all of the different applications displayed here. Now for today's exercise, the only prerequisite is that you've got an account connected, your Microsoft Dynamics account connected, uh, to your It Does It account. And once you can do that, you'll be able to access all of the data that we need to work with today. So the way that you can do that is you go over to your Connections tab. And in this case, I've already set up my Microsoft Dynamics CRM online. But if you had, didn't have this, you would just simply go down and add an account connection further down the page. I'm going to go back to the, the Does It library. And let's go and find our Dynamics application connectors. So I can start typing Dynamics and quickly find the Dynamics library. And again, today we're going through the Entity List Connector. And that's this connector right here. The Microsoft Dynamics Entity List Connector has a number of inputs, which I'll scroll down to here. The main one is simply selecting the kind of data that you want to work with. Now this drop-down actually contains the list of all the different types of data in the CRM system. Generally, you'll have all of these options in your own instance. This list will also contain any custom entities that you may have created um, to hold custom data. So the important thing to note is that this connector can connect to just about any kind of data that is in your Dynamics CRM instance. I'm going to go down and check the um, or choose the contact data entity, okay, right here. And a couple other things to note, um, I've got attributes that I can include, we'll be getting into that in a minute, criteria, order by options, and then you can see page one and page size 999. These variables just restrict the amount of data that is returned by a query. Um, generally, you don't, you don't want to increase this beyond um, uh, you know, 999 just because uh, it'll take a long time to retrieve large amounts of data or it could. So I'll just leave these as is and hit get list and show you what happens. So this is going to your Dynamics instance. It just made a call out and it's retrieved 13 different contacts. Okay. And so it gives you kind of some summary information at the top. And down here below, if I scroll down to the results, you can see each of the 13 contacts was retrieved. Now, you can also see across horizontally, the, the headers of this table are all of the different attributes on contacts. And I bet you, you, nev you never knew that there were as many attributes as this on a contact entity, but there's quite a bit of data, including address information, email, etc. And of course the name. Uh, these are contacts after all. And as I, as I said earlier, we're working with sample data. So this is data that you know, has the word sample in it and, and has been pre-populated by Dynamics when it, you know, your instance is initially configured. So I'll scroll back over. You're, you're probably not going to want to retrieve all of this data every time you make a query. And so there are a couple of things you, we can do differently to change the output you get um, based on the inputs that you configure. Let's go back and I'm going to hit do it again and we'll make some changes to our query. So let's say we want to go after contacts and list just the first and the last name instead of the large number of attributes that you saw just now. So I'm going to go down to the Include Attributes uh, configuration. And if I, I in this uh, section, I can choose the different attributes from that uh, list of all of the different attributes that are on contact and choose just what I want to include uh, when I get data back from Dynamics. 
Now this list is alphabetized, but you'll see that there are starred fields here at the top. Last name is starred here. Uh, the starred fields are required when you're sending data to uh, Dynamics to be saved, and they also happen to be uh, very commonly used uh, data elements, and so for that reason we've promoted those to the top of the, the list. So, as I said, we're going to uh, list first name and last name, so I'll choose last name. I want to include another attribute, first name. I, all I have to do is add another include attribute and we'll look for first name in the list here. And here it is. Now, um, when I hit get list, I'll run this again. And again, we're not providing any criteria at this point, so I should get 13 contacts. Hit get list. And sure enough, it finds the 13 contacts. Only this time, the results are a lot skinnier. We only have the first name and the last name attribute in the list, as well as the contact ID and, and a result index. Now, you might be asking or wondering why contact ID is returned in the list of results. And the answer is that Dynamics always returns the contact ID or the individual entity ID, um, which is in technical speak a GUID. That's what this long string of numbers and letters is. It always returns the contact ID in any list. And that's actually a good thing because if you're chaining together contacts uh, and using the contact data on other entities, many times you'll need to set the contact ID on another entity if you're saving data. And so it's very useful to have the contact ID and for that reason it will always be included in the return results when you do any kind of query. Okay, so let's, now that you're somewhat familiar with how to set attributes, let's, let's go back and we'll now start playing with some criteria. So again, I'll hit, do it again and this time we'll work with some selection criteria to narrow down the, the, uh, the list of results. The most common way to restrict results using criteria is using is going after an exact match on a particular attribute. So again we've got the attribute drop-down list and this is what we're using to choose attribute that we're going to apply the selection criteria to. Let's say we're doing a query that's looking specifically for someone named Yuban. So I'll choose first name from this list. Okay. And we'll leave the operator as equal. Now there are many other operators in here to experiment with. But let's just leave that as it is now. And in here, in the value, I can say Yuban. Okay, so we're going after contacts. We want to display the last name and the first name and the results. And we're applying a criteria that says we only want contacts whose first name is equal to Yvonne. So let's try this out and see what happens. And one contact was found, which is what we expected uh, with the sample data. There's Yvonne McKay. And again, there's the contact ID. So the, the criteria works nicely. Very easy to set that. Let's try a different one, a different set of criteria. So we'll come back. And instead of selecting Yvonne, let's try a, a different type of query. And this time, we'll do a last name query. And the last name was up at the top because it's frequently used, the starred field. And this time, we'll try a begins with. So there are a lot of nice built-in operators that you can use to find data um, if you don't necessarily know the exact value you're looking for. Begin with is a nice one to use uh, in some circumstances. And so I'm going to just say last name begins with A and see what happens when we use that as, an, as a criteria. And get list. And in this case, it found two. It found uh, the Anderson and the Anderson, Nancy Anderson and Thomas Anderson. There are a couple more things I want to show you with contacts uh, and how to query against some different types of data than just name. Let's go back and hit do it again. 
scroll down and I'm going to I'm going to reset this criteria and we'll create a new criteria this time let's go on the created date querying against dates is very common in dynamics usually you want to go after data that has either been created recently or changed recently or changed within the time period etc there are a lot of different options that you can uh, use to query those that kind of data the and that's represented by the time operators which are listed at the bottom of all of the different types of operators so we have time yesterday last week last month today tomorrow next next week next month these are very useful they're they're kind of shorthand operators there are some other things you can do with dates but these are quite common I'll show you how these work let's go after the created on attribute and this is the date the date time stamp that the contacts were all created on now it just so happens that I created all of this sample data today so when I use that the uh, time today operator I don't even have to put today's date in the value I can just leave this as is and fire off a query and this should give me the complete list of contacts, and it does, uh, of everyone that was created today. And just to prove that everyone was created today, I'll go hit do it again. And let's add the created on attribute. Okay, so that you can see it in the output list. And there we are. And hit get list and here we are 13 uh, 13 contacts returned and then you can see the created on date has got this long uh, time date time stamp but you can see that today's date uh, is February 9th and it gives me the, the time at which all of this contact data was created. So that's one example of how to use those time operators. And just to show that they are sensitive to, to the time, I can do a query criteria that will result in uh, missing those created on dates by saying uh, created on tomorrow, which is frankly impossible because it's in the future but I can say create it on and I would expect to get no results and if again I hit get list I indeed get no results the final thing I want to show you is just how easy it is to switch to a different kind of data so I've scrolled down to the Dynamics Entity once again, and I'll choose the Account Entity. And all I'll do is just run a quick get list against the account data. And you'll see that instead of contact data, I've got my 10 accounts, and then, of course, all of the different account type of attributes that are uh, available on the, on the accounts, so things like website URL, an account number and things like that. All I had to do going back was change the dynamics entity. So in conclusion we've covered how to build or how to point this connector to different types of entities in your system, how to build or select attribute lists that you want to return if you don't want to return all of the data about an entity in your query and also started working with some simple query criteria that you can use to narrow down your search results. We hope that this is a real useful tool with you as you're working on your dozen solutions involving Microsoft Dynamics and we'd also like to say that there will be some additional uh, tutorials coming soon that cover writing data with Microsoft Dynamics CRM using some of our write, uh, create, and update connectors. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for using It Does It.